our uh, readings for Mass today are a little bit on the longer side, so I'm starting just a minute early. Both readings feature women uh, who are accused and condemned. In the first one, uh, the young prophet uh, Daniel, he's still just a kid, but he has wisdom beyond his years, uh, is there to uh, help the person who's accused. In the gospel, of course, the woman is brought in front of Jesus. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Again, we open ourselves to his spirit present in this place. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. You forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. You gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. And it says our Mass intention today, we're praying for uh, your own Father John Bauer and the staff here at the parish. O oh God, by whose glorious grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, 
the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, how you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemn, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, Lust has, has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. 
Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God awaits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Walk in the dark valley. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area And all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she replied, No one, sir. And then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Boy, that that first reading... Uh, could definitely be made into a a theatrical uh, production. You know, the young prophet Daniel, uh, he he would make Perry Mason envious today. Uh, He takes the side of this 
uh, poor woman that's uh, falsely accused. She's innocent, uh, but he reveals the plot. And uh, those two judges, of all things, elders, uh, condemn themselves. The Gospel of John that we're hearing from now uh, almost exclusively, next Wednesday is the only exception, and uh, tomorrow for St. Joseph. But otherwise, we're hearing from the Gospel of John. One of the things, one of the features of John's Gospel uh, is often said that every episode could be made into sort of a, a mini theatrical production if you if a person wanted. It, it, they kind of stand alone. Uh, today is no exception. Uh, this uh, woman is brought, caught in the very act of adultery. I, I don't even know how that's possible, but whatever. It, and and it, it's not an honest situation because it says right in the, the narrative uh, that they're doing this to test Jesus and to be able to catch him in some words that they can throw back at him and accuse him. So it's, their concern really isn't about her. Uh, it isn't about justice. Uh, the law of Moses says uh, the couple uh, who commit adultery should be uh, stoned to death. So where, where is he? It doesn't say that. It, that story doesn't even care about that. It's about trying to catch Jesus, and it's about a mob, uh, mob violence, really. Uh, we know how things are going to work out. We're in the, the last full week of Lent now. Uh, next week is already uh, Holy Week, and uh, we know how things are going to work out. The mob is going to return. Uh, ultimately, they're going to be able to put Jesus himself to death. But today, uh, he uh, demonstrates uh, how masterful he is. He takes this accusation. Uh, they're looking at her and saying she's committed adultery, so she needs to be stoned to death. But Jesus tracing on the ground in some, some artistic uh, representations of this scene, uh, when Jesus traces on the ground, what he's writing is the sins of uh, the Pharisees in the story. It doesn't say that, but it's, but it's, a, it's a worthwhile uh, idea that he's, he, he, they're transparent to him and he is tracing their sins on the ground. Uh, so when he says those who are sinless should be the first to throw a stone, uh, they have to go away, of course. Uh, not one would be bold enough to suggest that they are sinless. Uh, and so, like Daniel does for Susanna in the first reading, Jesus uh, saves this woman. Unlike Susanna, she doesn't argue that she is uh, innocent. She may not be whatever, but the compassion, uh, uh, the forgiveness of Jesus is so radical uh, it includes her too, of course, and it includes you and me uh, and uh, everyone who would turn to him. It's a rich uh, Lenten theme. Uh, we're a people in need of forgiveness and healing ourselves, and so this is a good one here for the beginning, this final full week of, of Lent. We're on this collective retreat to this journey. We follow Jesus, the Master. He leads us to Jerusalem and to new life. I invite you to stand with me then as we, of course, turn to him now with our prayers. So once again, we think of our family and friends, neighbors, members of our parish here, most especially those who are in any kind of trouble today. We pray to the Lord. And of course, we continue these days to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and now in Israel too. We pray to the Lord. And lastly, today, we pray for anyone, falsely or not, who is accused. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you do call us to follow Jesus unreservedly. We ask for your grace today, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Of course, every step of the way to Jerusalem with Jesus, we have his very prayer in our lips, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ 
hasten our steps upward toward you through Christ our Lord. The uh, announcement here in front of me says, uh, after Mass on Wednesday, so the day after tomorrow, uh, if you have a little time, uh, there need help assembling Easter baskets for Mary's place in the Fellowship Hall. So that'll be this Wednesday the 20th. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.